I was always interested in uh, uh, economic growth and its uh, impact on people's well-being, uh, but I had no idea uh, that there were any data um, on happiness that where you could actually see how people felt about uh, their circumstances. And uh, I was at the uh, center uh, in Stanford uh, for advanced study. And uh, there you get together with people from a lot of different social sciences. And one day at lunch, one, uh, a sociologist said to me, Dick, have you ever looked at the data on happiness? And until then, I had never even known it existed. Uh, so I became the first economist, actually, uh, to look at the statistics on happiness. And I, what I was interested in was whether economic growth made people happier. There was this thing called the energy crisis in the late 70s. I, had just, I was just deciding to go to graduate school in chemistry. And by the time I got into graduate school, it was over, quote unquote, I'm putting that in quotes. Uh, but it got me interested in energy. And then I just started doing simple calculations and realized that the problem was around to stay, that it wasn't really over at the beginning of the 1980s. So I started my career worrying about the energy problem. Nobody else was, it was always depressing. There were no meetings to go to. Everybody was doing organometallic analysis. And I never could find a home for a meeting, but finally the world came around. I knew it would, it was obvious to me. So I, I just kept on my track of doing uh, science for energy. And, and now it's become popular. It's getting close to 50 years since I published my first article, Does Economic Growth Improve the Human Law? That was the, the thing that had promoted the, my interest. Uh, and uh, it turned out actually to be a very interesting result because uh, when you looked at people at a point in time in a survey and looked at higher income and lower income people, higher income people were happier so it looked like high income and happiness went together. But when you looked over time at what happened in a country when the happiness, uh, when the income of people went up through economic growth, it turned out happiness did not go up. So there was this paradoxical result. At a point in time, income and happiness are positively related. But over time, income and happiness are not positively related. And that was a paradox that emerged from my first encounter with happiness statistics. If you start looking at energy, what you're going to find out is that the, most of the energy needs going to come from the poor of the world. And that set a different metric for us because the poor don't have a big infrastructure to work in. Uh, we do. You, you, you are living in a multi-mega trillion dollar infrastructure that moves energy. When you get to the poor, they're in villages and, and there's nothing there. And so that set a different science metric for us saying, what could you use around yourself to create energy and energy storage? And, and so for us, that was sunlight, air, and water. And so that, that set a course with, with not a person, but a group, the poor in mind. How do, I, how do I make fuels? How do I make fertilizer? How do I make vitamins from just sunshine, air, and water? And once that clarity kind of set into our heads, uh, that target opened up a huge number of science problems that we then began uh, studying.